Hi folks, I'm just going to do a little demonstration video here on your new van and just give you a rundown of how everything works. So we'll just go inside here first and we'll show you a few bits. So, the first thing I want to show you here is your control panel. So what you have here is you have your main 12 volt switch here for switching the van on and off. That just switches on and off. Um, you have an alarm here that will come up when you're, if your leisure battery your leisure battery voltage there is on this top green one with the red ends on it. If your leisure battery ever goes down into the red, that wee light there will alarm. Um, the next one over here is your battery condition. You can see the or the voltage on it. The, the, you can see this top symbol here when we press the button up the way. That's your engine battery. It's at 12, nearly 13 volts. So if you start the engine, you see that going on up. Um, and the bottom one's the same. It's just over 13. Now when you start the engine or plug the van in, you'll see that going up as well. Now, in relation to the leisure batteries, we'd recommend that you plug the van in at least two days every fortnight. Especially in the winter time when you're not using the van, just to keep your leisure battery right. And that'll just keep your, 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 your battery well charged up. And maybe not so much in the summertime, but don't plug the van in all the time. Just two days every fortnight will be sufficient to keep the battery alive. So we we'll go over here now, we have, we're working on this wee blue gauge at the bottom. We have our fresh water, and you can see that's full, and our wastewater, which is empty. So, when that top tank empties, it'll go into the the waste tank. So you'll empty that one and fill that one up at the same time. And then the last wee thing you have is a wee yellow light comes on when the van's plugged in. And that's just handy to keep an eye on if you are plugged in the campsite, and uh, to keep an eye on it in case you trip out or somebody plugs you out. So that wee light lights up when you're plugged in. And then over here, then you have. That's just the thermostat for the, the heating, if you're wondering what that is. And that's just the awning light outside. That's what that we switches for there. So that's your control panel. So folks, just looking here, you have your switch here for your electric step. And there's a buzzer that'll buzz if you leave that out when you start the engine. And down here at the bottom, you have your entrance light switch. Now this is the only switch in the van that'll actually work with the 12 volt off. And that's just to let you into the van at night time. And when you switch that on there, it'll bring in the, on the two lights inside. So that's the only switch in the van that'll actually work with the 12 volt off. So moving on to your fridge, we'll just look at your control, main control knob here. At zero it's off, and then you have your three different settings. The first setting is gas, the next one is your 220 volt. That's your mains when you're plugged in. And the last one around here is your engine battery. So that just, that'll only operate when the engine's actually running. So the plan really would be, if you're going away, tomorrow would be to put your fridge on the mains first and let it freeze up overnight and then when you're traveling switch it onto that one and that'll keep the fridge cold as you're as you're traveling now that won't freeze the fridge from warm you need to freeze the fridge up first that's really just to maintain the fridge as you're traveling and then on the gas setting around here the only thing you have to do is switch it onto gas and if we come over here now you can see the little red line on here in this in the in this wee window here but we're trying to, when we light the gas, that little red line will go up into the green to tell you that it's lit. So all I'm doing there is just pressing in that valve, or that that, that knob there. And you can see that that's, lit, that's it lit now, it's going into the green. Once it goes over that black line, and then you can take your finger off that. And if it stays lit, it'll stay up on, stay up in there. And that's, the, that's your temperature control in the fridge as well, on this side. That'll do the temperature for, for your electric and your gas. So what you're looking for there is the green, the red, the red line to be under the green. That means your your gas is lit. Now if I switch off the gas over on this side, which is over here, if I switch it, the fridge off, you can see the red line will drop down into the white. That means it's off. So to recap on the gas, just switch onto the gas and press in this, press in this knob till it lights. And you have your your fridge catch here, and your freezer and stuff inside. So the next thing we're looking at here is your the controls for your heating. Now this van has got electric heating and it's got gas heating. And it's all incorporated into the one um, boiler. And the boiler heats the water and it actually heats the van. So it's just one unit that does all the work. So you can see somebody's left these little uh, laminated uh, stickers to explain what each one is. But I'll go through the whole thing with you. So you can see there's one on, one on the bottom, one on the top. So on this side here is your power selection. You can see here somebody's written on here. So what you have here, the wee nub, this wee nub in the corner, it's a, it's a gas now at the moment. And so you can see that's gas only. 
Now if we switch that up the way, so what I mean by that is say we go up to that next one, you can see here it's, that's electric, that's the mains at 900 watts. And then the next one up is mains at 1800 watts. So that's electric on its own at the top, gas in the middle on its own, and then down the bottom you can have gas and electric. So if it's very cold, you want to heat the, that's the fastest way of heating the van, you'll have the gas and the electric on. So that's your five different settings there. So if we're not plugged in like we are at the moment, the only option we have is gas. So if you're wild camping, you can only use the gas. If you're on a campsite, you can use the electric, or you can use the electric and the gas. Now the only thing to say about the heating or heating the water on the gas is the fastest way of doing everything. Um, when the electric heating's on on its own, it's a lot quieter now than what it would be when the when it's running on gas, and it wouldn't be as it takes longer to get the the heat up on the electric, but it still heats the van and it'll still heat the water. But the fastest way of heating the water or the van is on gas or on gas and electric. So the next knob we're looking at here is what we're going to do now. So at zero with the whole heaters off, and we can see back here now we'll go back on to gas because we're not plugged in. And the first thing we can do here is bring that down to the wee flame, and that's heating the van. And the inner circle here is the temperature you want to heat the van at. Now you can see a green light came on. Now the green light coming on is indicating that the heater's working okay. If you ever get a red light on there, it means that the gas is probably switched off. So you have to go out and switch on your gas. But the first setting there is heating the van. And you can see down here somebody's written in blow air heating only. The next one down then is heating the van and heating the water. So it's blow air heating and hot water at 60 degrees. Now you can see when we put on any sort of water heating you always get a yellow light comes on. Now the yellow light will go out once that gets to 60 degrees. And the last two settings then are up the top. You have 40 degrees of hot water and 60 degrees of hot water. So that's if you just want hot water on its own it's these two at the top and if you want any heating it's these two at the bottom so you can see here hot water is 40 degrees and hot water is 60 degrees for a shower only the reason we say that is that at 60 degrees the water can be very hot for the sinks but it's the right temperature to have if you're going to have a shower because you can mix it with the cold so the the, may, the, the right way to have a shower on this is to put it to 40 degrees and let the yellow light go out and about 10 minutes before you have the shower put that back put that up to 60 the yellow light will come on and within about, don't even wait for that to go out. After about five or ten minutes, go into the shower, and the boiler will still be running as you're in the shower as well. So you're getting the maximum amount of hot water. So that's just your heating system. So if we go back to here now, that's it switched off again. Now, the next thing I want to show you to do with the heating, and um, it's in this cupboard here, just below your wardrobe. And this is your heater in here. Just a wee quick look here. So this, that's your heater and we'd recommend that you don't store anything in this cupboard because the heater needs air to operate and there's a lot of wires and pipes and stuff in here. So if you can avoid storing stuff in here, there's a there's a blow air, there's a fan in here at the back. So if you leave any bits of paper or anything in there, it's going to suck it in. So just avoid leaving anything in that cupboard. Now what we're looking at here is the frost valve. This, this, this thing here. And at the moment it's up and that means it's closed. And how this operates, at 2 degrees that'll drop down itself, like that. And it'll drain all the water out of the, that's in the water heater. Plus, if you at that stage, if you open all your taps, it'll release all the water from the taps down through this valve out onto the street outside. So at, at any stage that drops down, you're going to lose your water pressure. So at 2 degrees that'll drop down like that. And the way you correct that is you come in and pull it back up again. Now if it's too cold, if it is like zero degrees in here in the van that will not stay up and the only way you'll get that to stay up is to switch on your heating and it sends a little voltage down these wee wires here and when you pull that up it'll stay up so there's no need to put pegs or cable ties or anything on this if that won't stay up switch on your heating and it'll send voltage down here and keep that up for you now how you winterize the van which what i mean by that is how you how do you get rid of all the water out of your van for the winter time in the winter time you'll come along here, switch off the van to make sure your pump's not running. Press that down and it'll start draining all the water out of the tank. And that stage then, if you go to if you go to all your taps and open them in between hot and cold. What I mean by in between hot and cold is that's hot that way and cold that way. So in here in the middle and lift it up the way. Now you can hear the pump running in there now because I, the, I have the van on. But at this stage you'll have the fan switched off and the, the pump will be off. 
and you'll open all your taps in between hot and cold and all the water that's in the system will drain out through these back down to that red valve and if it's very very cold like minus five like we had a few years ago we would recommend that you'd actually blow into the tap at this stage and it'll actually blow all the water out of the the head of the taps and don't forget about your taps in the bathroom as well you'll have to do your three taps so that's that's all there is to winterizing winterizing your van you can drain your fresh water tank and your wastewater tank at the same time if you want um, when you come back then all you'll have to do is pull up the red valve and put your put your tap onto the hot setting and open up your tap and what that'll do there it'll fill up the uh, the water heater with water and you, what you'll be getting then is air coming out through your you'll get air coming out through your your tap here and once you have a free flow then you're back in action that's everything and once the valve is closed the system's closed again and you'll you'll have you'll be back to normal so that's how you want to raise your van so in the wardrobe just above your heater you can see you have your 220 volt traps the same as what you have at home they should normally be up the way and in here as well you have your aerial your aerial just unlocks here you unlock this here and push it up and down to get a signal now with the digital you might not have to push it up and down too much just tune in your TV and down here you have your booster so you have your cable going in and your cables going out so now just underneath this uh, you can see your dinette seat here if you lift up the board here your fresh water tanks in here and you can see in the water there there's that T-shaped um, handle if you lift that handle up the way it'll pull the stopper out and that'll, that's how you drain your fresh water tank and then once you push the stopper back in push the T part back the way it is there at the moment and that's it closed again so that's your fresh water tank and there's an overflow there as well if you forget to take your hose out it'll just it'll run the water back out onto the outside and your wires for your pump are these wires here if you ever have to change your pump it's straightforward enough and that's all there is to your your water tank so we're just looking here there's a wee thing in the van here there's an inverter in this van and that's it on there and you can see the little red switch and where that's supplying what that does there is converts 12 volt to 220 to 220 volt AC and where this wire is going to is a socket up here beside the TV this, this beige one here so what you're going to have out of this here is you'll have 220 volts but you'll only have 150 watts so it's handy for, you can only charge, you can only really use that for charging phones or laptops or something like that. When you're not plugged in, you'll get mains out of that there when you switch on that inverter. But it's not made for cookers or for toasters or kettles or anything, any high um, amp sort of stuff. It's only really for chargers or stuff like that. So here we are now, we're just in your bathroom. I'm just going to show you the toilet. The toilet just flushes here, this blue button here flushes the toilet and you hear it flushing there and then you get a red light on here when you're setting these changed when it's full and you see a red light coming on here and you just have the shutter around the side here on the side of the toilet and that just opens and closes that just opens and closes there now the main thing I'd say if you have, ch if you have children always make sure that they push that fully back see that last wee push is the actual seal working on the bottom of the, the toilet that wee, that wee bit there just make sure that they push it back fully so just looking along the panel here above your oven and your sink you see you have a couple of main sockets you have two here these only work when you're plugged in you'll have one here beside the bathroom and you have another one up in there in your TV cupboard so they only work when you're plugged in and these are just gas valves and these are all on but we just recommend you leave them on and switch off your gas at the tank um, down here at the bottom then you have your your oven and grill um, it's straightforward enough there's a little igniter here and you have your sorry your oven that way and your grill that way and it's off at the middle so and there's a you have your pan and all that stuff inside it as well so folks I'm just going to show you how to make up this metal bed here at your dinette so you can see I've just lifted the two cushions out of the way a bit and what we're looking at here first are these two wee locks so you push them down the way one here and one here and you lift off your table and then the leg and the table you actually pull it and it halves like that 
and then we attach our table on to the back rail, the, the lower rail, and you can see uh, I put that up at about a 45 degree angle and then just drop it down. So that's the middle bit of your bed. So we just turn our cushions around. And that's your bed made up. Now the choice you have in this van as well, you can have that size of bed or you can we can bring out these pieces here at the side. Now if you can see how I done that. I just lifted up this piece here and put it in front of the board. So you can see that you can see how that operates at that angle. See underneath there, and you can do the same to the side as well. And what you do then, there's an extension actually on the table. If you see this wee board here at the back, it's just clipped on here. You take that out there, and there's two extended rails on the table, and you can extend your table on out, so your table will actually come out in line with this here one here. And then there's extra cushions 